So today I'm here with Paul McCleary, uh, sponsored by himself, yeah. Paul McCleary PT, I think we'll get that in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think this is going to be a fantastic podcast, we've had a little chat already, yeah. we've got so much to talk about, we've got life coaching, Ironman, ultra running training, you're a triathlete, you part of the round table, yeah. part of the lifeboat crew in Hastings, the beer fest, there's so much we can talk about, cars nice. and Loads. mindset and talk for hours. Yeah. So. Let's dive straight in. Just before we start, just remember to subscribe, comment, and rate this episode. Again, Paul will have a lot to say, so I'm sure people will have a lot to say back. So, again, just follow us on social media, guys, and we'll get straight in. So, Paul, welcome to the Kickstarter Confidence. Hey, man. How you doing? Yeah, good. Good Thank to be here. Thanks for having us here. Thank you for your time, my friends. Um, no I know you're a busy man. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's start at the beginning. So, you're a PT. Yeah. A and through. So, yeah. Talk to me about your PT. So I know you're busy. I know you're very well known in Hastings. Yeah. Um, so I guess a bit of background. I suppose not everybody knows how I started and everything else. So um, back in 2008, my mum and dad both died of uh, cancer. So within 12 months of each other. I was working yeah. in London, um, doing the big commute up and down every day. And it was in, I kind of found myself in a career where it was playing bills, but it wasn't, it wasn't ticking the box. You know, it wasn't really... Is this what I want to do for the rest of my life? It's a bit cliche, isn't it? But yeah. um, so mum dad got really ill and sadly passed away. So and I how, had how to, old was you? Uh, touch on this subject. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this was two thousand eight, so it's twelve years ago. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, mum died late two thousand seven. Dad died two thousand eight after we got back from our honeymoon. So we got married in two thousand eight. There was an wow. awful lot happening <laughs> very yeah, yeah, yeah. the time. So I had to take time off of work to uh, deal with bits and pieces yeah. um, relating to both of them being at St Michael's and funerals and stuff and uh, I remember going to my boss at the time and I was in an IT sales role for a big company in London Yeah. and I remember going into him saying I need a bit of time off because mum and dad's here and he said you've got to make a decision I said what do you mean he said you're either here or you're there yeah. like proper black and white cutthroat and yeah. I just thought you know, oh, if you're going to put that on my doorstep then see you later so yeah. I, I walked out of that was it I was done and had been going to the gym for a while you know when I worked in London, I was overweight, so I was 14 and a half stone. Didn't wow, really do, I yeah. did not know that. Oh, mate, yeah, have you not seen the photos? Well, <laughs> I, I obviously you. didn't go that far back. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I was, I was a bit chubby around, around the waist. And, yeah, yeah, when you work in London, you're commuting on the train for four hours, there and back every day, you know, stop at the bakery, pick up a sausage roll, have yeah, a pint meal deal. Work, yeah, all of that yeah. sort of stuff. So, yeah. And I wasn't really exercising. So, um, you yeah, know, both my parents died of cancer. And I thought, you know what, this is a wake up call. Again, very cliche, but this is a wake up call. So I had been doing some exercise. I yeah. then got a bit more serious with the exercise and then realized that at the time there wasn't a lot of people out there to help people get back in shape. So gyms arrived, didn't they? Sort of late, late 70s, early 80s, the yeah. cliche kind of you know gym and step classes and stuff. And then I kind of thought, you know what? I'll be an instructor. I didn't really know kind of the ins and outs of what his personal training. I thought it was something celebrities had. Yeah. Um, so I looked into it and did the course. It was a distance learning course over three years. Finally qualified 2008 as a level three, they call it level three advanced, but pretty much now all PTs end up being the same level. Yeah. And um, I remember not having a job and now being a qualified PT. I'm like, how, how do yeah. I start? Okay. How do I start from here? So I actually had a couple of conversations with a couple of people and a, and a really good friend of mine said, look, I want to help you out. He said, um, my girlfriend's got hypertension. She's on tablets. She doesn't know where to go. You know, if you do us a bit of a deal, maybe it'll help you to get started and you can work with her and you get some experience and that was a great opportunity. So I took her on, worked with her for six months. She lost loads of weight, she ran the Hastings Half Marathon, she came off the tablets. This is great, so I have a proper success story. I can make a living out of this. Yeah. She then referred me to somebody else, somebody else, and as you know, word of mouth, bang, that was it. Uh, business started. So that was way back 2008. I remember starting my first circuits class, January 2010. Um, and obviously it's evolved from there. So, you know, here we are 12 years down the line, uh, lots of ups and downs. But, you know, being 47, living in this town as long as I have, it's a very small town, so word of mouth is key. And you do get a lot of, I mean, my wife hates me because we go out on a Friday <laughs> night. We go out on a Friday night and I can't walk 10 stops by going, oh, hello, mate. Oh, hello. hello. You know, hello. Yeah. So it's great. So, yeah, I, I hope that most people know me and it's it's for a good reason and, and it's a good reputation. And 
you know, business the way it is at the moment shows that that's working. People are still coming through the door. I still yeah. have a regular, you know, um, group of clients from a one-to-one -one basis as well as the classes. So, you know, would I look back and change anything? No. Um, the decision in my life came at the right time and it forced me to do something that I wouldn't necessarily have chosen to do. So, yeah. you know, when people say things happen for reasons, it's a cliche. Um, yeah. But you know, it but really did. It really yeah, did. It did, and it's completely changed. Like, say, you got two daughters. Two daughters, yeah, yeah. ten and six, Jessica cool. and Phoebe, yeah. Which is obviously giving you more time with them, as opposed yeah. to like if you're commuting to London every day. Yeah. yeah. So it's oh, completely changed. Honestly, life. You, you know, those of you that are listening to this that have got children will understand what it's like to be a, a parent, a dad, a mum, whatever. If you haven't got children, I don't think. I don't mean it's rude if you don't understand what it's like. I live every minute of my day for my kids yeah. and I want to bring them up the best I possibly can. And we strive for the best all the time, don't we? And, yeah. you know, having been able to be self-employed and spend time at home with them, my wife works in London, which she was before, before lockdown. Yeah. So, you know, and we don't have, like, it's, it's really a bit in-depth this, but so my mum died on the 2nd of August 2007. My wife's mum died on the 2nd of August, four or five years later than that. My yeah. daughter was born on the 4th of August and my wife's nan died on the 4th of August. So wow. that, that week, yeah. between like the, the 2nd and the 4th of August, I yeah. it's like a, a real you know, tough yeah, time tough for us. Yeah. But we don't have like hardly any family. So I've got my brother Steve, yeah. who works down in Devon. I've got my other brother lives in the States. Steph's got two brothers, one lives in Eastbourne. So we, we don't have any sort of family support. So when yeah. it came to school runs and nursery runs and for kids, after the kids or, it, yeah. it, was us. it was us as parents. So... We, we bonded really closely and that's that's a, a really good quality in, in life for me is to always be there for my kids and not palm them off on other people. Yeah. Occasionally we'll go out, like we celebrated our anniversary a couple of weeks ago and we, we got babysitters in, we asked um, Steph's brother to do it, but you know, leaving, living your life and looking after your kids as your first priority for me is absolutely key yeah. and everything else comes second to that. Yeah, mm. which is a good message for, so. for, for many people. Yeah. I think a lot of people, and again, it, it's no, I've got friends that work in London and they can be on 100, 150,000 pounds, yeah. but they leave at 5 a.m. and yeah. they go back to 9 p.m. Are they happy? And that is the question. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that really what you want to do? And I love my job. It tests me yeah. because it's a people person industry and a people person yeah. job. And like I said to you earlier before we came in here, we're all the same race, we're all the same people, but we all have a different upbringing, we all have a different way of um, you know, categorizing our. our elements of our life if you like so yeah. so we have to accept that we're all very very different people but i literally love what i do yeah and i would never see myself doing anything else and i think that is for me is i've got it right it's, it, yeah. i'm in the right place at the right time and it, it's like you said what we do sort of on, on in the same kind of field mm. is it is a very people person job you yeah. know if you've got you can you can work at Tesco's. You can be a lawyer. There are so many jobs that you just do your job. Like Shadow's working from home. She's in the office in the front room, yeah. and she's just doing her job. Yeah. It doesn't matter if she likes or dislikes the people. Yeah. Whereas our job, you don't have to like them, but it certainly makes it so much easier if you do like them oh, yeah, and you yeah. like most of them. Yeah. And it's so hard because you will get people that maybe don't gel with you, or you don't gel with them. What you do might not be right for them. So. Obviously, you're quite well known. You've got a very big name in Hastings. I think yeah. most people do know you through PT and the other stuff that you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. It's very difficult to please everyone, isn't yes. it? Yeah, it really um, is. How it really do you? Is. And I, it's something that I've struggled with a lot because I like to try and please everyone, and I've realised over certainly the last couple of years you can't please everyone. Yeah. How do you deal with not being able to please people? It's 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 a really good question. So, and I don't want to get too deep with all of this, but I think it's quite important to, to mention these things. So, as a child. Um, my father wasn't particularly the best father in the world. He had a very, very difficult upbringing himself. He was brought up in Ireland, put in an orphanage and abused quite a lot. Wow. So his fathering to us replicated that a lot. So I'm not going to okay. go into too much detail. Yeah. But uh, but as a youngster, um, I was, was kind of, I guess you could call it bullied um, yeah. and made to feel quite worthless at times. So I was quite a shy and sheltered young person until I left school and then started to realise that being told you would never achieve anything in life, <laughs> being told that you're yeah. useless, yeah, that that whole kind of just compounding, compounding, crushing kind of sensation. And I don't blame anybody for this, and we're not going to talk about that because it's a very long story. But I think it's made me sensitive, and yeah. most people know that I'm quite sensitive, and I take a lot of pride. So I have a massive expectation of myself, so therefore I have a massive expectation of other people around me. So yeah. It's very difficult when you come into contact with somebody who may come. Like, example somebody comes to class for a year then stops coming yeah. my first thing is why 
I don't mind if they don't come back, but I want to know why. Because if yeah. it's something that I've done, something I've said, a way I've behaved, then I need to know so I can change it. So you can improve. So when people don't come anymore, sometimes you have to understand that it's not necessarily about you. So your, your sensitiveness or your paranoia, it's not about you. It's that they just simply have got a change in their life. Yeah. So you have to kind of just back yourself away from that immediate response to the situation and just accept that some people, like you said earlier, some people just have a very different way of dealing with things. And I'm learning that very slowly. And particularly last year was quite a tough year for lots of reasons. And I actually sat down quite a lot and thought about it and thought, you know, what, I can't keep getting hung up because for every client I lose, I gain two clients. Yeah. And that was happening quite a lot. Yeah. And it's it's sad for me that I've had people that train me six, seven years that don't train with me anymore. But they, their circumstances have changed. So yeah. I'm not going to get hung up on that. Um, I don't do conflict. You know, I've never had a row with anybody. I've never had anybody come to me and say, I'm not coming back because you did this, said this or whatever. So sometimes you just have to appreciate it's not necessarily you. Yeah. Their circumstances just have changed. changed. Yeah. People talk about motivation and mojo and can't be bothered and there's another conversation. But I think dealing with it, you just have to be... Just a bit more educated and, and just yeah. put yourself in both sides of the situation yeah and then it helps you just kind of move on and, yeah. and if you've reached out to people and said i know she haven't been back you know any particular reason yeah tell me if it was me if it's not cool yeah. you know i understand you're always welcome to come back when you need to and it can be a conversation rather than an argument totally i mean certainly probably say two three years ago when we really started to grow and my fight team developed and then the fight one or two of the fight team would move to another gym. Oh, yeah. And I'd be like, I'd be like, I that, felt it's hurt. hurt. It's, yeah, I get that. Because you spent four, five, six working with them years, and then they go, I want to go over there. And then I'm like, well, what have I done wrong? Have I upset you? Have I said something wrong? Is my training slipped? Am I not the instructor that I want? Like, you get, I, I got really paranoid. Mm. And it's taken a good few years to go, that was their path then. This is their path now. Yeah. Yeah. Same as my divorce. Like, People get divorced and they go, I've wasted 15 years of my life. And I, it's taken a while to learn this, but it wasn't a waste. We had a great marriage. We had two beautiful children. That was a path. That yeah. path has ended. Yeah. And now we've started a new path. No, nothing's forever. No. And that is the thing. No, nothing's forever. And very similar to that. And, you know, when I look at when I first qualified as a PT, how many PTs were operating in this town when I first quali qualified? There was hardly any. In fact, there was Commando <laughs> Fitness, so Chris at Commando. Yeah. I, I think he's now finished. Um, and there wasn't really anybody else. And now, if you you throw a ball out into Facebook of someone recommend a PT, <coughs> that's 30, 40, 50 PTs. Oh, yeah, there's thousands of them. Yeah. Go and do a weekend course, become a PT. I'm not picking on any PTs. Yeah. But, you know, so if somebody rings me up and says, oh, I've started training with this person, I think, well, hang on a second. If you're going to, I don't know, a run club on the same night that I offer a run club, yeah. then your decision is based on the fact that I can't offer you something anymore. So you need to tell me what it is I can't offer. Yeah. If you go to a run club on a Tuesday and I don't do a run club, fine, go and knock yourself out. Um, yeah. Like my spin class, I have, I've had other PTs actually come to spin class. I've had other people's clients come to spin class. I don't think, oh yeah, I've got their clients on board. I just think, great, people are free to go wherever they want to do. There's yeah. enough seats for everybody. Session. Knock yourself out, just go and do it. But I know what you mean. It, it's a personal dent on you if somebody yeah. suddenly ups and goes yeah. elsewhere it's like you know wait on a second you're having an affair <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Honestly, really, yeah and that was a real hard bit of pill swallow and something i've had to learn mm. over time and it like you say it isn't forever no. it isn't always for everyone so for example we don't do leg kicks k1 and then all of a sudden people want to start doing k1 so yeah. you've just i've learned to bless them mm. and you know wish them well and on they on they go and, and the most professional and then they come can, back the, the <laughs> most professional thing you can do is to literally open arm and go really glad you train with me yeah good luck with it you know with yeah. whatever you're going to do you're always welcome to come back yeah if you get a bit grumpy with them they kind of mm, mm -hmm. head back to him yeah yeah and that that was hard to learn I, and i think I've, I've learned that well now but it did take a good couple of years yeah. to, to take them. and then like so hastings is a small town there's lots of running clubs pts kickboxing gyms boxing yeah. same yeah. as any town yeah. um but yeah four miles hundred and fifteen thousand people it's a small gym. Actually, though, we do a, th a th it's quite funny, a bit random, but we do a Thursday quiz aside. So it started with Zoom, yeah. and then I started doing a Kahoot quiz okay. during the, the class. So yeah. basically, people tune in, and it's an hour of exercise. And, and when they're recovering, instead of just standing there like, what happens now? I fire a question at them. Wicked. How many square miles is Hastings? I mean, I've always said it's like, it's four miles square, as in four miles that way and four miles that way. Okay. So That's 11 square miles. Wow. Eight, yeah. what is it, 90,000 people? Yeah. You know, it's like five connections to Kevin Bacon. You've heard that, right? Yeah, like, probably five. Yeah. There, there right. is somebody that will know somebody that's like, yeah, always. And the Hastings, yeah. end of the line. Yeah. And you just <laughs> don't want to have a, a reputation of being 
you know, somebody who's grumpy or negative or whatever, because that just that goes around. Yeah. And people have got choice now. So, yeah, you know, it's 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 a tough pill to swallow, but it's an important lesson to learn that, yeah, if you've been going as long as we have. I and mean, when did you start HKA? Well, I mean, it's been officially a business for 10 years last year, yeah. but I've been teaching for like 20 months. Yeah, way longer so, than that, yeah. So when you've been going as long as we have, I think, you know, you're sounding arrogant, you rise above it, don't you? you, 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 you I've, I've learned to, know. like, yeah. not to get involved in that. Well, and she said this, and he does mm -hmm. that, and he said that you're too expensive. Because yeah. we're not playing it. This is, this is, for me, this is my living. It, it yeah. puts a roof over my head, food on the table, pays my mortgage, all of those things. I'm, I'm like anybody else, I, I work, this is my yeah. job. If it doesn't work, if it doesn't work, things go to the wall. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah, totally. So, yeah. and uh, I think, Again, you know, we're by no means the cheapest, and people go to him, well, it's only four pounds down the road. And I'm like, well, if you want to go and train in a church hall on a dusty, dirty wooden floor with no kit, cool, yeah. crack on. Yeah. If you want one year's worth of knowledge, yeah. over 20 years of knowledge. Yeah. Like, that, that is the one thing, maybe I shouldn't say on here, <laughs> it's the one thing that drives me mad though is undercutting, because there's just no need to do it. Oh. You know, I've never charged more than five quid for an hour at my class. I've done that since the start. I've never put that price up. Yeah. People go, I'm not, I'm not coming to you because somebody's offering, you know, three pound fifty, two pound fifty. We're trying for a month for free yeah. just to kind of suck them in. Yeah. And oh, I, again, years ago, I used to go, oh my god, oh my god, and I'm like, that's cool. If, if that's what they want to do, if they want to undersell their worth, yeah. then that's cool. My I know that's my that. favourite saying, right? A good PT isn't cheap, and a cheap PT isn't good. I love it. That's the greatest yeah. thing in the world. Yeah. Um, and like we're fully booked. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. fully booked. Yeah. And we're not the cheapest. We're not the most expensive. I think we're in the middle. I think you get good value for money. And that's what it's about. But, that, but that's it. You know, that's holding it. What is expensive? Yeah. Is a Rolls Royce expensive? Well, yes, if you're used to driving a Ford Focus. Yeah. Yeah. And you pay for what you get. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Put the worlds to right. <laughs> Let, right, let's have a lock in. <laughs> only up till 10 o'clock. Yeah, only up till 10. Then we've got to go. Uh, cool. So that, that's your personal training. Yep. Um, you're a massive family man. I think we'll come back to that in a bit. But you're an Iron Man. Yep. You're an ultra runner and a yep. triathlete. Yeah. So, I mean, that's one thing that motivates me. Like when I see your posts, like you're at the top of a mountain, you've, mm. you've swum the sea. But like, I'm like, fucking hell. <laughs> like, I need to up my game. So can you tell me just a little bit about kind of what you got you into it and what you do? Yeah. So um, I uh, started the business 2008. So I thought, right, if I'm going to be a PT, I need to be fit. So I need to go and find out what this is all about. And weirdly, I ran the first Hastings Half Marathon in 2008 and raised money for St. Michael's because mum had died. And it's the first time I'd run the Hastings Half Marathon. And I remember going up to Bannertines because I am a member there at the time. And I got involved with a small little social group. There was Bill Darby. Ian Jarvis, Paul Matthews, obviously, oh, yeah, at the yeah, time, yeah. and they've got like a little group together. They were like, We're training for the Hastings Half Marathon, mate. Yeah. Great. It was like six weeks before the race. I'm like, This is great. So, went out, joined them a couple of times, and thought, Actually, I'm doing all right. And race came along, ran the race, ran the first one, which I'd ever done, hour 48. No idea. To, to me, I didn't know that was good or bad or whatever. Yeah. A couple of people said, Hour 48 for your first half marathon. That's, that's quick. That's pretty, that's, yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you should join the club. Then I got introduced to Terry, Terry Skelton at um, Hastings AC. Yeah, and I literally had um, like Ross in, um, and Barry in like last week. As yeah, well, yeah, so. yeah, so I know both yeah, those yeah. guys. Um, so I, I joined the club and I remember standing in Crowhurst Car Park, which is a route they used to train in on a, on a Saturday, and remember meeting Terry and he was like, well, what do you want to, and Terry's usual, well, what do you want to you know, achieve, blah, blah, blah. I said, yeah. I'd love to, to break 130. And he went, oh, you'll do that easily. You know, wow. Which is, which is like, for me, I was like, nah, no chance. Yeah. So anyway, I trained with those guys and before I knew it, you know, um, over a period of time, I mean, I think my PB for, for a half, like 122 something. Like that. Wow, so, that's you know, insane. So I smashed half hour of my time. <laughs> yeah, 122. That, yeah, and that's and that's down to training with the club and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm like, this is great. So then I thought, right, let's do a marathon then. Like, why not? Yeah, done half marathon, next yeah. step, right? Why marathon. not? Yeah, why not? Yeah. So I remember entering Beachy Head Marathon which is my first trail marathon. It was my first ever marathon. And the reason I entered it was given my oh, beach is really tough. It's like, yeah, yeah. I was like the hiddest thing on the planet. Yeah, so I'm like, naturally, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go for that. Yeah. So I remember running that four hours, I think it was. Loved it. Thought, okay. right, I'm doing that every year. So I did that for the next five years and got right down to, I think, three, I don't know what it was now, 327, 328. Wow. I loved that. And then I didn't know what an ultra marathon was, but somebody at the time had said, oh, there's a, a race at the weekend and it's a 50 mile race from Washington, which is near Worthing, back to Eastbourne. I went, what? 
that far now? Yeah, yeah. So it's called an ultra marathon. Oh. My ears picked up. Oh, that sounds like a marathon. marathon. Yeah. Ooh. How many people do that? Uh, two, three hundred people. So um, looked at their website. It's a Centurion Running, which is the, the stuff I've done mostly. Yeah. And looked at it, and I thought, oh, they actually do an event called the South Downs Hundred, which is like that's Winchester to Eastbourne. Wow. How many people do that? Yeah. Like two, three hundred people do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, my motto in life is if somebody somebody else has done something, you can do it too. Yeah. Chuck me entry in. So it was a training run. Um, I took part in the 1066 relays, which was Pevensey to Rye. And you run a leg and then you've done your leg and you finish and you go off. So we, we ran it as a, a team of AC. So I ran the first leg and then got my bag and then just carried on running the other 30 <laughs> miles. So I ran the 36 miles. I remember getting to Rye and meeting um, Nick Brown at 18th Runners and yeah. picking up some awful mug from the, the mayor of Rye or whatever it was. Yeah. That was my first kind of distance run. Yeah. And then I just entered a series of races. So I got into ultra marathons and what I love about ultras is the the addiction of the mental side of it. Yeah. So it's not a physical thing. And I've spoken to many, many ultra runners, and I'm, I'm hoping a few that I know will listen to this. I'll share it. But yeah, um, everybody's carrying something. So I've said to you, in my head, I carry that. I've been told for a long period of my life that I won't achieve stuff. Well, here I am now. Like, like watch this. Right, I'm going to go and run 100 miles. I'm going to run 50 miles. I'm going to run 69 miles. I'm going to I'm going to run around Mont Blanc. I'm going to run across the, the Sahara. Yeah. Not because I'm cocky or arrogant. It's because I'm proving that I can do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's so, told me I can't. Yeah. And I'm going to go and People say to me all the time, oh, I really wish I could run a marathon. I go and run one. Can't do it. There is nothing yeah. stopping anybody doing anything. Your yeah. own limitations. So, um, A, I love running them. I love the, the feeling of being absolutely destroyed. Um, and I enter stuff just loosely. So I'm not a massive swimmer. Most of you listen to this will laugh. But, um, I'm not a massive swimmer. Yeah. It's something that I have to do to take part. But I remember looking at the website and looking at Ironman and going, Ironman, that sounds proper tough. What's involved in that? Oh, it's only a 2.4 mile swim, 112 bike ride and a marathon on the end. Oh uh, yeah, why not? So Sign me up. Yeah, sign me up. So, um, and I wasn't going to be brave enough to do it on my own. So I've done a couple of sprint tries before that and a couple of halves. Anyway, a good friend of mine, George, George Holt, whatever you know. No. Oh, he hadn't done a full Ironman either. So both of us decided the best thing to do would be to enter one. So we looked up what was fairly tough and we thought Lanzarote looks tough. <laughs> it's like the tough, <laughs> guy. one of the toughest <laughs> ones on the, on the calendar. So we rocked up and, and smashed out Ironman Lanzarote, which those of you that know, Lanzarote is very windy and it's a volcano. So you get the idea of how tough it is. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that, that kickstarted the Ironman stuff. And wow. You know, and I've done, I actually had to write this down if I couldn't remember. So I've done yeah. five full Ironmen, four half Ironmen, and I've done 20, 24 ultra marathons, which if you add them all up, it's about 2,000 miles. Wow. And that, that's varying. So that's 30s, 50s, 50s, how many, 100s, sorry? 24 in total. And how many miles that equivalent to? About 2,000 miles. About 2,000. Yeah. Okay. So no, and I started, my first ultra was 2012. That's like, so again, that's people will be like, wow. Yeah. Like, and you've done that in quite a short space of time, right? Yeah, yeah, and that's it. Yeah. I'm fairly new to it. I mean, the, the, yeah. the biggest thing for me was 2018 when I did the, uh, it's called the um, Centurion Grand Slam, which yeah. is, they, they host races throughout the year. So you can do either the four lots of 50 races, which is yeah. the 50 Grand Slam, or you can do the four lots of 100 races. So that's 100 Grand Slam. Yeah. The, the odd few that are a bit crazy enter and do the whole lot. Yeah. So wow. what, what did I do? I don't know. Like, I'm not doing the 50 grand slam. I'm not doing the high <laughs> I'm going to do the whole lot. Yeah. And I'm going to do an Ironman in the middle of the, in the summer as well. Yeah. Um. So that was probably the biggest achievement to date because those races fell anywhere between two and three weeks apart. Yeah. And rule of thumb, and I'm sure people may argue this, is that when you run a race, you're supposed to allow a day for every mile for recovery. Okay. So if you run 100 miles, 100 days recovery. 100 days recovery. Yeah. Now you've got two weeks. Wow. So you go back out and you run another one, you yeah. run another one, the other run. So I think there's only 12 people that have ever done that. So again, not I'm not trying to big myself up here. What I'm trying to say to anybody listening is, if you believe in yourself yeah. and you're prepared to take a little bit of a gamble, because I didn't know how I was going to get on with these things. Yeah. I'm a bit lazy when it comes to training. I could have done a lot better, I'm sure, if I'd have trained a bit harder, but I've got a few things on my plate. <laughs> I'm kind of busy, people. <laughs> busy. Um, but the point is, go out there and do whatever it is you want to do. You don't yeah. need somebody to hold your hand. You don't yeah. need anybody to tell you you can do it. Just enter it and do it worst that's going to happen is you you don't finish or or you fail or whatever yeah. but we only learn from failure we don't learn from yeah 
yeah, things can go well. Something. So do you know what? Yeah. Go out there and do it because that's yeah. what that's all I've done. I don't I don't walk around going, oh look at me with a you know yeah big medal around my neck or whatever it was. But yeah. um, so yeah, and, and I'm at that point now where I haven't done anything this year. I was supposed to have done Cape Roth in May, which was Fort William to um, Cape Roth, which is the furthest point in Scotland. So that's yeah. so multi stage. That's about four hundred k. But they got cancelled because of COVID. Yeah. So I've got nothing in the calendar this year. So I've been quite lazy over summer and yeah. I've got posts down. Post yeah, I've, I've actually read that yesterday. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was saying I wanted to ask you actually, like, how have you found, because obviously we've been, apparently there's a, a nasty cold going about. Is it? Someone assuming you've signed that, oh, but uh, apparently there's a nasty cold. wash me in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, there's, uh, I mean, it's completely ruined kind of what we do. PT, training, competitions, events, shows, yeah. tournaments. How have you found... It just picked up a little bit when you said ruined. So, um, I, I don't. I don't think it's ruined anything. I think what it's done is it's been of a, a, a reality check. And uh, one of the things we talk about around table, one of our kind of um, mantras is, you know, adapt, adopt, improve. What I've done this year since COVID has started is learn to take my business online. Um, I've learned that actually you can take part in a race, and it doesn't mean you have to stand on the start line with two, three, four, five hundred people. Yeah. You know, virtual races. Yeah, because mm -hmm. ultimately, at the end of the day, all you're doing is competing with yourself. Yeah, sure, it's nice from a camaraderie point of view and a social point of view to run with other people, but life has to change, and life will always change in different directions. If you sit there and go, "Oh no, it's all ruined and it's all collapsed above me," and you know, yeah. blah blah blah, then again, that's a, a, a an outlook on life that's a bit too negative for me. So, I think, I mean, it's certainly not improved life. Of course, we've all, <laughs> we've all felt the struggle, but yeah. You know, change how you work. Find another way of doing things. You know, yeah, quite, adapt. With quite, what's yeah, happening. totally adapt to it. I'm quite glad that actually it's given me a year off. It has given me a year yeah. off. I've got no events. Um, my training has taken a bit of a back step. Yeah. But sometimes it's nice to to it's, slow down a bit. What is it? Uh, Glastonbury, isn't it? They have a year off to allow the fields. What, what they call that? Um, Regrowth on the field. <laughs> no, no. There's like a special word. I want to say furlough, but it's not furlough. Anyway, yeah. somebody listening will know. But yeah. get. Give your body chance. We all need recovery all the time. And, yeah. and for me, from a mental health point of view, I struggle some days. Um, it's, it's taken the pressure off. Yeah. Because even I, although I run all this stuff, I still uh, massive pressure. Yeah. Still massively expectations are up here. My competitive side's up here. It's taken that away from me and I felt a bit more relaxed recently. So I, I hate, it's to, actually to, it's yeah, I hate to say it, but you know what, if we yeah. go into another lockdown, yeah, do you know what? Yeah. Bring it on! I, I can adapt to it. I don't yeah. mind. It's not ideal, yeah. but I don't mind. Yeah, it's, it's kind of good. I mean, I've said to all my all my members and, and people on board with me is again, I, I use the word ruin, but you adapt. So, like when you're driving a car, the road isn't always quiet or busy. It isn't dry or wet or snow. No. You know, you might throw a jab a thousand times, but are you punching someone too or short? You have to adapt yeah. all the time, and that's not just in. Our business or with COVID, like every day of life, yeah. you could have an argument with your wife or your husband or yeah. your children. Yeah. Work, something goes wrong at work. You just have to adapt constantly. And I think yeah. people go, well, it's not normally like that, so it's against the wall. Yeah, and and that is the thing, isn't it? It's, it's habit and what is normal and what isn't. And I live every day trying to fathom out people. Like if I could, if I could go back in life, and this is what the question I was going to ask you, so I'm going to kind of preempt this a bit. But yeah. if you could go back in life. And do something differently what would it be that you would do and for me i'd go back and study sports psychology or human psychology because i at the age of 47 still haven't fathomed people out mm. i don't we're all the same and if you do you'll be a millionaire <laughs> absolutely but people's outlook on life their their background everything has a different you know outlook so when you're talking about adapting some people are able to adapt some people aren't some people listen to this and go what's he what's he mean he's happy for another lockdown yeah are you mental just embrace it yeah you know? I, I get that people have got their own businesses and they're going to struggle. I get that times are hard, but we all have expenses. This is going to be controversial. Yeah. We all have expenses in our life that we don't need. Yes. And all those people that are sitting there saying to me, I can't come to a class, can't afford it. Have you got Sky TV? Have you got a mobile phone? Did you have, have a bottle of wine? Do you smoke? Yeah. 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 Sorry. Priorities. Yeah. Priorities. Find a way of adapting. Yeah. And it's, I suppose that goes down to their priority. So is Sky more important than their fitness, yeah. mental health, well-being? Yeah. Um, and do they value what they're getting as well? Yeah. And I think the two will then balance up. So, again, we get this quite a lot. Um, and my son can only train once a week because we can only afford once a week, which is absolutely fine, get by that, the way. Yeah. Absolutely fine. But 
you've just told me your son's been bullied, he wants to lose weight, and he's struggling to go to school. Mm -hmm. So all of them come around mental health and low self-confidence and so on and so on. But you still have got full sky, you have got a car, like you spend a lot of money elsewhere, and so you're gonna put that in front of your child's mm -hmm. mental health. Mm -hmm. I know which way round I would value that. Yeah. So for example, um, I know that like one of my daughters, she's just gone into year 11. She's like, mate, she's really dyslexic. Okay. So she really struggles at school. Bless so you. we will get her a mentoring mm. because we've done it with, with my other daughter, Beth, and she smashed her exam, although she didn't do her exams. You know, she's gone from here and here in her yeah. grades. Yeah. So we can see the value mm. in paying the money out to get a mentor to come in to help her grow her knowledge mm. to therefore do better. Yeah. So I know there's value there. Yeah, totally. And, and it's just where people balance their value mm. over you know, what they're getting. Mm. So when we were in the kitchen, you said to me, if you've got any questions for me, so yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask you a question now and I'll yeah. do this to some of my clients. So I'll give you five things and you've got to put them in order of priority. Okay. okay. So money, yeah. friends. Can I write this down? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah write it down. <laughs> so, so, got, so money. So you've got money, friends, family, Job, work, yeah. and you. Right, grade those from one to five. And family, tell everybody uh, what you put first. Money, friends, family. Work. Work. And you. So they're the five key things in yeah. life in my Now, view. that's probably changed about 10 times over the last year because the last sort of year to 18 months, this has changed so much because of I'm now on a journey mm -hmm. of my family would always come first. Okay. Like, always come first. And I know that sounds... <clears throat> again cliche but what I've learned this year is if I'm underperforming so for example if I had a mental breakdown I can't support my family mm. so actually I could argue that I would come first mm. so to put those so, in order do you see what I mean so put, if one, I would, put I, one to five tell everybody what you've got and then I'll I'll either go yeah that's great or I'll change it yeah um, and again you can argue this way around so and that sounds bad I would put myself first because then I could make sure my family would then come first and um, which would do obviously wife and kids um I would then probably put my work next, um, which would then bring in um, the money, and then probably my friends. And I know that sounds bad, so it puts my friends at the bottom. Mm. Um, so sorry, friends, because you are really important to me. Um, <laughs> he doesn't have any now. <laughs> I don't, yeah, all my friends are gone. But uh, again, you know, for my family are really important to me. I, you know, I got divorced. I went through depression. I went through. 18 months of hell, yeah, I've been on my ass. Yeah. I, I, you know, I went from, you know, I only had a three bed detached house and a nice car with a mortgage with a wife and two kids, like a normal 2.4. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have a 10 bedroom house, we didn't have a Lamborghini, we just had a normal life. And I went from having a normal, half decent, comfortable life to living in a caravan, drinking every night yeah. and not knowing if I'm gonna survive. Yeah. So I've understood the epitome of hell. Where, and I, I at, promised yeah. myself no matter what, like, there's, there's times when I'm going, well, if I'm no fucking good, life's over, mm. and then the girls' lives are over. Yeah. So I had to go, right, I need to be priority first. Mm. And then obviously, when you come out of that, you think, well, I'm not first anymore. Everything. So it, it does kind of change depending on where you're in your life. And, and this is a question I ask a lot of my clients, clients because people don't understand. So if I say the word selfish, is that a negative word or a positive word? I think a lot of people would say it's yeah. uh, a negative. It's used derogatory in it. Oh, yeah. it's so selfish. Yeah. So I will put my hand up now. <laughs> if my wife listens to this, she'll go, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I am selfish, but yeah. I love to help everybody else. And I will do, if you, Carl, if you ring me up at three in the morning, went, mate, I've broken down. I'm in Glasgow. Can you come and get me? I can't get anyone else to come. I, I would come. Yeah. I wouldn't even think about it. I get, a mental note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get a lot of pleasure in doing that, but equally I have to put myself first. Yeah. To to step away from my family to go to I don't know, Morocco for a week to run through the, the, the desert. I'll enter races. I won't even tell my wife. I won't ask her permission. We're, we're, we're an adult couple. Yeah. If I don't put myself first, then relationships are affected. Yeah. So that counts out friends and family. Work is affected if because a lot of my clients are friends. So then that, that's affected. So if I yeah. turn up every day and I'm miserable and I'm introvert and you know I'm I'm not motivated in my classes, so that doesn't bring any money in. So it knocks out friends, family, money. Yeah, it, it nothing only, works. It only leaves you. So yeah. you have to be selfish. So and the point I think where we're trying to get to on this, Carl, is that when people say I can't come to class tonight because 
the dog's got his ear, hair cut or, you know, <laughs> I'd forgotten yeah. I've told my friend I'm going around there for coffee. No, 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 no. Yeah. You don't understand the importance of having an hour to yourself to do some exercise, no matter what exercise that is. The, the physical benefit, the mental benefit, the, the structure benefit to your five things yeah. starts with you. Yeah. And you have to be able yeah. to do that. You yeah. have to be able to prioritise that. People go, it's all right for you. You do it day in, day out. No, it's not all right for me. Yeah. I love my kids. I love my kids and yeah. I hate being away from them. But I have to go and do things for me. Yeah. I'm up at 6am to be yeah. down the beach to Absolutely. do my class. Absolutely. You know, uh, yesterday I, I went out for the day. My friend's 53rd birthday. Got a, a flight in the Spitfire. Do, do I want to come, come with him? Right, of course I'll do. Yeah. I went up to Big and Hill, stood in a car park, watched him fly, was pleased for him, came back. That was my day out. Amazing. I could have stayed at home and worked and I could have done loads of paperwork and I could have spent time with yeah, Stephanie yeah, yeah. and the girls when I got home from school. But that doesn't, you know, yeah. it, it's about me. So I came back in a better mood because I'd done stuff like that. You know, people have to understand that you have to put yourself yeah. first all I'm, the time. I'm glad you've, you've given that angle for the people that are watching and listening mm. because something I badger on about all the time is like my fighters. Now, the thing with, with a striking sport is in football, no offence footballers, but if you lose, your team lose, and what's happened is they've scored a few goals. Yeah. You might have got shoulder barged a few times. But in kickboxing, boxing, judo, like, when you lose, you've been knocked out, choked out, your ribs broke, like, your face smashed in, like, you've lost. Sounds great, can I join in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I sign up, and people are like, why do they do it? But from a, from a striking game, like, when you lose, you lose. So it is important that you're running is first and you're training but yeah. you can't say so there are so many times i mean i'm not i don't fight anymore but no. I, I teach my fighters my thing the amount of times that like are you coming to our wedding well yeah but i've got to teach my fighters first and i'm like okay well what time do you finish well i finish the gym at half seven home shower at eight o'clock i'll be i'll be on at half eight and they're like what i'm like i've got people fighting at the weekend i can't just not turn up no offense because you're having a wedding yeah. so i will now most people wouldn't go They'd be like, it's 8 o'clock, I can't be bothered. Yeah. And so I'd say, oh my God, got to get ready. I'm like, okay, babe, don't come to the gym. Get ready. I'll go and teach. I'll race home. I'll have a quick shower. I'll get changed in like seven minutes. And then we go to the wedding, yeah. half eight, nine yeah. o'clock. And that's what you've got to do. They don't care if you turn up 10 minutes late. No, of course they don't. There's another 150 people for them to talk to. Yeah. Um, if anything, it's a bonus. But <laughs> don't have to talk to Carl when you get here. <laughs> but my point is, I will, have to, I will put them first. Yeah. And it is sometimes quite a drain yeah. that you can't go to events because of you know, what the gym is doing it's, 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 um, yeah, it's, a, it's a constant commitment with, with work and stuff and I quite often I only have one phone I have one, one phone one phone number and I have like everybody text messages Instagram Facebook yeah. WhatsApp blah 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 I'm going off on a tangent <laughs> this is how you manage your, your social media and channels right WhatsApp is for groups only don't Single message people on WhatsApp. Yeah, I can't stand that. Because I have, I, like people. I have, I think, 20 groups. Yeah. So I look at my phone at any one time and have 64 group yeah. messages. Oh my God. If somebody needs me urgently, if a client texts me and says, I'm running late, I can't get there for 10, can we do 10, 15? Your message goes into like 64 messages. Just yeah. text me. Yeah. So text me. Direct. Um, direct. Yeah. And my phone will ping all day long because like you probably... As a PT, I don't start at nine, finish at five. I am 24 seven. Oh, so people message me at three o'clock in the morning. Can I book in for PT? Yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing at three o'clock in the morning? I'm asking for PT. Yeah. But they do. Yeah, laying in bed thinking of me. Um, yeah. <laughs> thanks very much. But I've got, I, I rotate an, an average, and I don't mind, I'll disclose this, and people will do the maths. But I have 25 one to one clients that operate on a weekly basis. Some are twice a week, some are three times a week, once, once a week, some are online, some are face to face. So, yeah. On top of that, I have all my classes, so 10, 11 classes a week, which average 10, 15 people. That's a lot of people that want my time. Yeah. I'm in, and a, it is I'm in a running well, shop, Paul. Yeah. What, what shoes shall I buy? Yeah. The pretty ones, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, th th there is a massive pull on your time. So, yeah, I don't know where we started with this. Where are we going? Um, do you know what? I, I don't actually know. Um, I was, we were talking about... <laughs> priorities. Priorities, yeah, priorities. and... Yeah. The, the, the being selfish, being yeah. So, 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 but yeah, so closing on that. So, so the point is, put yourself first because you know you're important. You that, will right? always yeah. have time to. I mean, my clients know. They'll text me, and I have five or six clients that text me on a daily basis their calories and how much activity they've done that day. It's an yeah. accountability thing. Yeah. I don't need to reply to them. No. They know I've read it. Yeah, I don't need to reply with a thumbs up, which is my favourite emoji on any social media platform whatever Quick. thumb up oh. thumb down it's easier. <laughs> yeah. um, but they don't they don't need to re see a reply from that it's nice if i do reply and i try yeah. once a week maybe to go oh that's great well done this oh, week yeah but but you've got to make time for yourself before you make time for other people yeah you know? yeah and then depending on 
your structural family, like say, you, you know, you might have a really small family, you might have no family, you might have a huge family, so yeah. that will then change yeah. kind of where that is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, that, so that's mine. There you go. Good question. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, so where to next? Right, so you are, quite, so you're a member of the round table, you're part of the round table, and then you've kind of grown and developed to that, and you're also part of the RNLI, <laughs> so the, the Royal National Lifeboat. Institution. Institution. Banged it. There you go. When was it founded? <laughs> oh, Christ, one of them. I didn't realize where the mic was going. So, obviously, Paul does a lot, a lot within the community. So, mm -hmm. can you just tell the listeners a little bit about Roundtable? Yeah, yeah. So, probably maybe a bit more about that. I was introduced to Roundtable, and this is how it works, really. Um, I was introduced to Roundtable eight years ago, and Roundtable is a very old fashioned organization for young men to get together like-minded young men get together it's not supposed to sound weird i was told this is the cooler version of the masons uh i don't really know what the masons are other than it's probably supposed to be funny <laughs> probably <laughs> and they're slightly older. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> anyway so the point being is it's a social club um and there are many 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 round tables globally i forget how many um i should know <laughs> so i joined the round table and met a lot of really really good quality guys um you know a lot of the old members that have been on there for, for a period of time. So you can join at 18 and you have to leave by the time you're 45. So it keeps it young, keeps ideas flowing. And, and the point of it being, and I'm not sure this was the original point of it, but the point of it right now is that mixing with other like-minded guys who have a very similar sense of humour to you is really good. It's good yeah. to get away. I don't, I don't, I'm not a drinker. I don't really go to the pub. I don't like going and watch football. So no. I go to round table and I've always gone to round table and had monthly meetings. Yeah, because it's good to chew the grass. It's good to banter off people, and yeah. and and it's a community based thing. So those of you who don't know, and you should know, so I'm going to tell you off for not knowing. The Hastings Beer and Music Festival is a product of Round Table. So as a table, we are one of the the wealthiest tables because we put on one of the biggest events yeah. in the southeast. Yeah, it's Hastings huge. Beer and Music Festival, which was um, started in 1981. So we're next year on our 40th anniversary if it goes ahead. Yeah. So from the beer festival, uh, which most of you hopefully come to, you're going to have an amazing time. We raise anywhere between thirty and sixty thousand pounds, wow. and that is profit. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That profit is then given back to our local community in ways of charities and local good causes. Yeah. We've and you literally keep that in Yeah. 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 Um, we get applications from sometimes a little bit further out, but the, the point being is that it, that money goes back into the community and. That is by an application. So if somebody has a sick child, sadly, or, or there is a special need in the community for a defib, or there's there's lots of um, different ways of, of donating money. They write to us. We discuss it. Is yeah. it a worthy cause? Can we help them in any way before that? And we give the money out. That's amazing. So it was a really, really good thing. And I, I've said before, I love helping people. I love getting involved in things. I've lived in this town my entire life, and I want the town to grow and progress and be an amazing place to live for my kids and their kids. So I, I started going on a monthly basis and then I, I joined officially and I've had a different role within Round Table the time I've been there. So um, I've done the social side of stuff. I've been the community uh, request officer. I was then secretary, I was then vice chairman and then I was chairman. When I was chairman, I reached 45. So therefore I was asked sadly to, yeah. to leave if you like. Yeah. And because I was chairman in my last year, I stayed an extra year. So I did two years. Um, and now I'm president, so I was invited to be president. So Paul Wilson is the current chairman. So he said to me, Paul, I'd love you to stay on. Yeah. Good asset to the table. I think he was just going to smoke up the arse. Um, <laughs> Put a catch up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to stay on as president? And so I stayed on as president and I'm currently the chairman of the beer festival. So the, the, the rule of thumb is you do beer festival for two years and then you pass it on to somebody else because it I keeps the ideas keeps fresh it, yeah, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So when I took beer festival on, it was my idea to do the, the Friday night dance night and get yeah. the DJs in. Which like people love. I think that's the best night in yeah. ever. Um, so yeah, so, so that, that's round table. So that, yeah. that takes up a good percentage of my time. Um, yeah. We have monthly meetings, which we're doing uh, you know on Zoom at the moment. I go and play golf with the guys, we go out and socialise, we have a good good banter, a good laugh. And yeah. for anybody listening that says, why is it men only? Just do away with that question because I'm not answering it. <laughs> we get we get a lot of criticism. Yeah. It's no different, you know, I know equality these days is important, but it's just, it's a group of blokes that get together and we banter like anybody else and we just have just a really good night out. And, and it's just, not that we've never wanted women to join, it's just, it's, it's always been men only. And there was... You know, the, the evolving part of that was something called a ladies' circle, yeah. which was a group of ladies that set up, and, yeah. and it kind of equaled that. 
in Hastings, there yeah. used to be one many, many, many years ago, and it was the wives of the round table members. That all faded out. Nobody else wanted to do it. So yeah. if anybody wants to set up a ladies' circle, drop Paul Wilson a, a, a message. I'll yeah. post his number up on my Facebook later. But, you know, we don't rule out that. Let's be honest. When women get together, they're worse than us anyway. But, yeah, this is it. <laughs> Women. You know, it's, it's, it's just one of those things, so I'm, yeah. I'm not going to go down that road of equality and stuff. But anyway, that's why it is men only, because anybody's watching is thinking, yeah, it's, you know. Okay. That's you know. fair enough. But yeah, so um, that's round One time. thing I wanted to approach you, actually, um, I've been, I didn't know where to go until I knew it was you this year, um, is I've always wanted to do a fight night mm -hmm. at the beer fest. Yeah. And I had no idea if it would be possible, feasible, what the cost would be like. We won't talk about that now. No. And obviously with COVID, that's completely ruined that. But I have got an idea. Obviously, we, we've used Horntie, we've used Hastings Centre. Yeah. I've always wanted to do an outdoor event. I don't mm. want to risk the weather. But when you have a tent... A large marquee, yes. And a large marquee yeah. and a sound system and a stage, yeah. I think it would be phenomenal. Yeah. It'd be the best thing that Hastings has ever seen as far as fight night would go. But obviously, COVID has... We're, we're open to all that, sorts of so. discussions and offers, so we'll, we'll have a chat yeah, for well, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's good. Um... Oh, and I ran and I, you want to talk yeah, about Yeah, and then you ran and I. So not only do you run and, and part of the round table, you also are a lifeguard. <laughs> <laughs> not quite a lifeguard. But, all right. Uh, so the, the, the funniest conversation in, in my household is when... Sorry, uh, by the way, RNLI and and lifeguard people. Well, no, yeah. RNLI, li, lifeguards are owned by the RNLI, so it's the okay. same product, but I'm, you just not, get a boat. I'm not a lifeguard. <laughs> I, just, I get a boat, yeah. <laughs> One of the biggest questions is, oh, I'd love to join the RNLI, but I can't swim. Just as, as lifeboat crew, if you end up in the water, it's a really bad day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you doing over there? Yeah, exactly. Um, so one of the funniest conversations that ever happens in the McCleary household is, Paul, what is this about? What have you entered now? What have you joined up? <laughs> so when it came to lifeboat, um, and I was saying to Carl before we came in here that uh, I've lived in Hastings 47 years. Um, I've been aware of lifeboats for 47 years. Yeah. Never thought to join, never knew how to join. And then... One day, you look good I, for 47, man. I know, thanks. Mm. PTs, it's a relaxed life. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I know a couple of the guys. So there was a, a guy on Lifeboat, uh, Mark Tewksbury, and uh, I knew him, and he'd done some coaching, or I'd done some coaching with him rather, rather than coaching me. <laughs> and uh, one day, this advert went up on Facebook Do you want to join the Lifeboat? And I just saw it and went, Oh, no. Click, so I'm, I'm, I'm on it. So I, yeah. I sent an email in, which was quite funny because it, it said, You know, imagine your page goes off at three o'clock in the morning, it's force 10, you know. You get a call out and you're going to go out to sea and it's going to be cold and it really, really like makes you think, oh, this is not good. On, yeah. I mean, it sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and it says at the bottom about, you know, being fit. So I remember emailing in, not realising Mark was getting emails the other end and said, oh, I'm, I'm 46, 45 at the time, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, and I'm a PT and, yeah, I'm two miles from the boathouse and I'm available and this is, yeah. and I'm fairly fit. <laughs> <laughs> i got so much stick. But I just saw it and thought, Do you know what? It, it just seemed the perfect not the perfect thing, but it seemed the right thing for me to do because I'd done some triathlon and I like the swimming side of it. A friend yeah. of mine's got a sailing boat and I like boats, I like cars, I like planes. And yeah. I just thought, it's something else I can go and do. And what a brilliant thing to have on your CV and yeah. to, to be able to tell your kids. And, you know, I don't I don't go down there hoping I'm going to save a life. I'm hoping I go down there and we never have to go and save a life. And yeah. I hope we never have to deal with anything nasty. But what an amazing thing to be able to do as a volunteer. Yeah. And you're yeah. learning. Yeah, it's all about yeah. learning in life. And... You know, I left school a long, long time ago. I'm learning something new. So anyway, long story short, went down, had the interview. Um, apparently, they thought I was all right, so they, mm -hmm. they offered me a position. So I joined at the same time as a couple of other guys, Ross and yeah. Steve, um, a couple of paramedics as well. And I absolutely love it. I love yeah. the social side of it. We're a really good bunch of guys and ladies. Yeah. Um, good equality in the yeah. island. Yeah, but, it. but it's just great. And, you know, very quickly, you're, you're learning and, and you're picking up skills and... It's just, yeah. Yeah, it's I just, mean, that's definitely a def yeah. like com that's definitely right wing yeah. out there. There's yeah. not many people that do it. Um, no. And it's and it's like you know, I can swim. I don't I don't get um, put off by uh, by heavy sea. And you look at the sea sometimes, and you you've got yeah. to completely understand it and respect it. Like the RNLI sticker slogan is, you know, respect the water. Yeah. And I have saved some people. You know, I've been out on twenty two shouts in the time I've been there, and and we gone out and rescued a man and his dog and we've gone out to you know boats that have yeah. broken down and we've gone searching for people that are missing in the middle of the night and stuff and yeah. and it's not about oh check me out I'm on the iron island i'm going to wear a hat and rest it it's about giving back and helping people which is fundamentally what i do all day every day yeah and i love it it's, it's just great and it 
it does take up a bit of time. I mean, I've had to change my work schedule to allow myself to be there. Wednesday nights was all my circuit night. Wednesday night is RLI training, where it was, you know, pre-lockdown. Yeah. So, you know, I've had to adapt myself to that situation because being selfish again, you yeah. know, I want to join the RLI. So if I'm going to have to cancel a class, I'm sorry, guys, but that's, that's what yeah. I'm going to do. Um, because ultimately, you're, you're training and learning to yeah. then go and save lives, which yeah. is then helping yeah. more people. Absolutely. Um, and my, yeah, my page is down there. It's on 24-7. I'm always on call. It goes, I go yeah. where I can. Obviously. What's it like? So I've got, I've got to ask because I'm an adrenaline junkie like yeah. you. Like I remember watching one of Ross's videos a couple of weeks ago and the boat's out in... I don't know, Force 3000, whatever, and it looked like it's going to roll over. And I was, I'm watching it, and obviously, most people would probably watch it and go, What? Oh my God, I'm going, How do I get a ride on that? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. when that goes, yeah. are you like, oh, It's go time? The first the, the first time um, the pager goes off, you are pumped. I mean, the adrenaline is pumping. Mm. But if I say to you now, if you, those that watch Saving Lives at Sea and the whole, all life and death panic charge to the station, it's not, not how it is at all. Yeah. Um, you, you have to stay within the speed limit. You can't drive like a nutcase. Yeah. Doesn't um, give you an option for blue light. No, no. sadly, we can't, we can't put that <laughs> on our cars. Um, when you get there, we, we wait outside the boathouse currently because of COVID, and yeah. then the helm or the, the coxswain will select his, his crew. Yeah. We then brief on what the job is. Yeah. If the conditions are too rough, if there's risk, if there's any elements that mean that we shouldn't go, we don't go. We wait for yeah. the Coast Guard to initiate the call. So sometimes we'll get a page and it'll say crew assemble. We go down with crew assemble, very relaxed very kind of you know yeah thought out occasionally if you get a person in the water the pager goes and it'll be i'll be launched and you get down there you know with the, limp, the speed limit as quick as you can you get changed and you go so yeah. there is an adrenaline buzz from that um but nine times out of ten there isn't that mad rush because yeah. the priority for the rmli is that you look after yourself and your crew yeah it's priority then the boat and then the casualty. The casualty yeah. will either be a person or a vessel in, in distress. Yeah. So that whole adrenaline fueled kind of like, you know, it's not like lean oars going down the sea from yeah. the fire brigade, you know, yeah. charging to, to put a fire out. It's, we're volunteers. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we have to be safe and we have to look after things. And that means that, you know, if a vessel's breaking, broken down and, and it takes 20 minutes longer to get there, that's the case. If there's yeah. somebody in the water and we have to get them out, then we'll, we'll apply some emergency to it. Sometimes yeah. the, the briefing will be shorter or you'll be briefing as you go down the beach. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, yeah, there is an adrenaline rush to it. There is definitely an adrenaline wow. rush to it, yeah. So well done and thank you to no, uh, like the people that you've saved and no, helped. Because I'm, you know, I'd like boats and I've been out before and I've, I personally haven't needed saving, but I do know people that have needed saving. So yeah. thank Always you. Always make sure your equipment's up to date. Make sure yeah. you wear a, a life jacket and, yeah. you know, and, and so on and so forth. But yeah, yeah it's it, and it's... You know, we all live in an, on an island and we all live by the coast. Just learn about the sea. Yeah. Understand tides, understand currents, understand wind. Yeah. Don't go in there when it's rough going, check me out, I'm the greatest. Because yeah, yeah. you'll end up. Yeah, the sea's more powerful than us. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah without a doubt. Nice. Well, again, thank you again. Because yeah. again, you don't get paid for it. No. But you can get paid at four o'clock in the morning, go out, and then you still got to go and do your PT at 8 a.m. Yeah. and stuff. So. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's that, it's that <laughs> funny that my kids now go, oh, your daddy, your pages not going off. Did, 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 did. Yeah, yeah, shut up. They actually yeah. sing the tune. They know it more than really. Me. But oh, yeah, no, looking at it going, don't go off, don't go off. But when it, whenever it goes, like, step or says off, you go then. Yeah. And, and nine times out of ten, I don't even get picked to screw. I'm a very, very small cog in a very large um, clockwork, you know. But without people like you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. Fair play. Fair play. Uh, Lydon Hill, bikes, cars. I mean, yeah. you're a right petrol head. Yeah, I love it. I mean, again, this would be a completely separate podcast, but yeah. I'm... You know, petrol head through and through so you it's weird. I, I watched something you you put up and and i think you were trying to find something to add to a list of things you've done and you've got a whole list of stuff you've done yeah and i was going through it thinking oh yeah i've done that you know i've done that i think oh, we're really alike because yeah. there's a lot of things you've done that i haven't but yeah i i, I leveled with you on a lot of those things thinking yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like skydiving yeah, yeah 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 you know well when i because i put out for my 40th actually so if you're watching and listening sorry we're going to talk about adrenaline for a bit um I put out my 40th was this year, and I said, like, what can I do? So Shade put the post out, going, like, it's Cole's 40th, we need to push the boundaries. What can we do? And everyone's going, go and do a track day. Done it. Go and do a parachute jump. Done, done it. Do a bunch <laughs> jump. And now, again, without sounding big-headed, it's not like, oh, I've done a parachute jump no. and a bungee jump. Like, every year, instead of getting a jumper that I don't necessarily like and some perfume and bits and pieces, you we perfume? say... <laughs> well, only weekends. <laughs> when she gets it wrong. Um, yeah, I... Uh, I'd, I'd say, yeah, don't bother that. Yeah. Just get, like, save up and we'll, we'll do something. We'll have a, a day or a weekend yeah, away. So much better. And we'll jump out of a plane or do something. Um, so, like, when my niece and nephew were both 18, 
my brother was like, they're getting a parachute jump. So it's, like, it's a family tradition now. When you get 18, you get thrown out of a plane. <laughs> so Paul's like, thrown out of a plane next year. And I'm like, sign me up. And it's not like, oh, I've done this and I've done this. I just like adrenaline. So I've done, and this is not like I've done this, but I've done 15 track days. We went to Palmer last week yeah, and I've jumped amazing. out of a plane off a crane and I just love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, so and yeah, we look for it. The thing is, you've got, you've got a sort of, what is adrenaline? For me, I don't want to sound cliche. I've said cliche about 20 times today, so, <laughs> so put a square box up. But for me, live every day like we could die tomorrow. Yeah. That sounds harsh, but we could. Mm. Easily. COVID can come and get you. I want to get to After my... 10 o'clock. <laughs> After 10 o'clock, yeah. If you're down weather spoons, it probably will. Um, I want to get to my, my deathbed and be able to sit there and go, do you know what? There is nothing I wish I'd have done that I've not. Yeah, don't live in regret. And the one thing my, my mum or my dad said to me when I was younger is say yes to everything. You can all say no later, but if yeah. you say no to something, that chance may never come back round again. Mm. So if somebody rings me up and goes, I don't know, you can fly to Ukraine and, and take a flight in a fast jet, yeah man, sign me up. Yeah. I'll find the money later. Yeah, and then what happens is you actually find ways to do, so, I mean, something, uh, again, people say to me, you're so lucky that you went to Palmer. I'm like, yeah. aren't you lucky? How yeah. am I lucky? I didn't win it. Well, like, lottery. I, I saved. I then spent the money, gave them money, and then they gave me cars to drive. There was no luck involved. No, no. I had to, so I was teaching at the gym Thursday night. We left at half eight. We got up to there about 11 o'clock at night, had four hours sleep in a horrible hotel, and then we was off at the track. There was no nice. luck there. No. But like, I'm like, four hours sleep, yeah. uh, three yeah. hours driving, yeah. let's crack yeah. on. And if, then if, the, if the practical side of you had got a bit of paper out and written down the pros and cons of going and what effect does this have and what will people think of it, you wouldn't have gone. Yeah. Yeah, throw it all out the window. Yeah. Off you go. Enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, you're so lucky. Wow. So lucky you work for yourself. Got your own gym. But there's no luck here. No one said, "Oh, here's a quarter of a million pound gym. Have it." Not yourself. We've worked hard for it. Yeah. Do you know what totally. I mean? So yeah, that does kind of annoy me when people say it's all right for you. It's yeah. right for you. You're you're skinny. Well, go and do and it. You can do this that, and the other. Yeah. Palmer next year then. Definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Steph, I'm going to Palmer Sport. No, no, Steph. Uh, sorry. <laughs> no, I, I just I love it and and. Yeah. You know, when we were younger, I remember being in the back of my mum's Ford Anglia and she would drive us over to Eastbourne, me and my two brothers, and sometimes my dad came. And yeah. Often he didn't, which was better. Um, <laughs> we'd go over to Arlington and watch Speedway. And, yeah. and that, for those that don't know what Speedway is, it's motorbikes going around a, a, yeah. a cinder track and spraying cinder and being really all just smoky and dirty and yeah. racing each other. And occasionally they crash, and it was just great. Yeah. Whilst driving over there, we'd, we'd have Formula One on the radio. And we'd listen to Formula One. So yeah. I was hooked into motorsport quite early on. Uh, my oldest brother, Steve, uh, used to go to motocross. He, he wouldn't race, but he would help out at motocross. My other brother, Kevin, then got 